Great Bridge, Chapter 1, August 2nd, 2002. He got off the 35 at Brixton Station and waited at the same stop for the number 3. Two evangelists, both mic'd up, competed with each other over dub bass lines at the station's mouth. Facing it, a bespeckled middle-aged man in a white shirt and high-waisted black trousers said the words, sex before marriage, into his headset. Closer to Jesse, accompanied by a wheeled amp, a woman dressed completely in white, from her synthetic hair to her Doc Martin boots, was screaming, Jesus died for you, into her mic, pointing right into the faces of startled passersby. A group of black girls with iron straight weaves, crop tops, and combats passed her in silence with their lips around McDonald's straws. Crowds of white people dressed in leather, skinny black denim, and band t-shirts, some carrying pint glasses and bottles, were dispersing onto buses and into takeaways. A police car waited until it had crept into Jesse's personal space before deploying its siren, making him jump and swear before its escape through the traffic. Men with dreadlocks stuffed into yellow, red, and green knitted hats sold posters of black legend and incense from trestle tables. A smell of skunk, southern fried chicken, raw meat, fresh fish, green bananas, and yams commingled in the cooling air, while debris from the day's market trade littered the gutters. A tall boy with thick lips and a do-rag crossed near and muttered the word skunk into his ear. But the number three came and Jesse jumped straight on it. Hey guys, back again and I'm here to do another review of Rainbow Milk by Paul Mendez. Gosh, I love this cover. Okay. So this is another book that I finished last week. It was also another buddy read that I was doing with Morgan Gale. We had a very good discussion of the book. This is a story of a young black man called Jesse who is raised in a family that is, they are all members of the Jehovah Witness, Witnesses community. And this happens because his mother, who was alone raising him, marries a white man who is a member of this community and then they have a recomposed family when his mother has two girls with this man. So when that happens, Jesse is sort of like put on the side. So he is kind of like treated like the black sheep of the family. So eventually what happens is Jesse decides to leave home because he can see that he has no place there, that nobody really wants him there. So he de decides to flee his situation and he goes to London where he tries to make his way. So that's pretty much what the book, you know, is about. But the book does ca carry on through Jesse's growth as a young gay man. And so we see how in the beginning he's very naive and as time goes on how he tries to gain knowledge and understanding of who he is as a young black man and how difficult that is for him and what he goes through. I expected so much more from this book than what I really got. It is, I feel like this book was seriously overhyped. But not really, because I remember people were showing the book, but I don't remember anybody really talking about it. So I can't say it was really, you know, overhyped that much. But now that I've read the book, I feel like there is some real editing issues with this work. The writing itself is not bad writing. I feel like the construction of the story needs some work. Because what you have is you, you start the story off with a black family living in what they call the black country. And it's supposed to be 1954. 
specifically the area is Swan Village. Now, I don't know that much about the geography of England, but I get that this is sort of a worker class neighborhood. It's 1954. It's the Windrush period. That's the period where Britain was asking uh, people from their Commonwealth countries to come and work in England. And so we it, it opens with this black family living in Swan Village and the black man is is ill. He's gone blind and he's at home raising his two small children and we we see him in their community garden and this man was supposed to be really good with growing flowers but now he can't really see and do the work that he used to do before so he's stuck at home raising the children and his wife is out working and making all the money now the thing is from that point i was very engrossed because I was like, okay, now this is kind of interesting. But when that part is over, we jump to Jesse's story. So you say, okay, so he's trying to show us the generations before, you know, what, how did they get from there to now? So they're trying to show where, where Jesse's lineage is coming from, even though they're not related this is these are the people that came over from the Caribbean. He, he's speaking of the Jamaican Patois. And and so we know that those are his those are his people. OK. And then we quickly go to Jesse and everything is different. So the book, it has some good points. But the problem is that they don't they don't they don't run it all through correctly. So after that, then we go through a lot of time jumps that never really made sense to Morgan and I, because you're jumping literally back and forth. One minute you're in 2001, the next minute you're in 2006, and then you're in 2003, then you're in 2016. And, you know, it's jumping back and forth, but there's nothing really important that you can grasp onto of the reason why they would be jumping back and forth in time. I think the only time where I thought, oh, okay, I can see what you're doing here now was when it was 2001 and they were talking about the Twin Towers going down. This being said, the book is also has some really good ways of showing how this character is growing and changing throughout the book. And there are lots of gritty parts, you know, about him meeting you know, a man and having sex with them and stuff like that. So if you're squeamish about reading about sex, you might want to give this a miss because there are a lot of little gritty parts. It didn't, nothing was for me bothersome, but I know some people don't like to read these kind of books because of that. That didn't bother me though. But what did bother me was how they introduced quite a lot of characters and how some of them you never see again and others you don't really see constantly throughout the book but at the end of the book he brings them all back and tries to wrap everything up really neatly and perfectly and it just rings false somewhere down the line you just don't buy into all of the story around Jesse. You buy into Jesse in the beginning, like you, you like you're like here for Jesse, but all of the people that are created around him to make the story, you don't believe. Them. You don't buy into these people because they're like here one page and gone the next, and then you know you never see them again, or they might come back all the way at the end. So it, it's a story that is, I would say, it's like it's limping. It's not a, you know, it's not a, it's not a very tightly wound story. It has so many gaps and things that are not right with it. It's just a shame. So this one, I rated it with a two stars. I'm not sure what Morgan did. I think she did two or two and a half as well. 
really, really, really disappointing. Now, would I read something else about Paul Mendez? Absolutely. Why? Because he has promise in his writing. And I feel like this is his first novel. Okay, he didn't get the right editing treatment. Okay, but I think old boy is going to get it right the next time. And I think his second novel will be something that, you know, we, we'll all enjoy and get behind, you know, really get behind. So, yeah, so that's it. That's all I have to say about Rainbow Milk. Sadly, I didn't like this one. But, you know, if you disagree with me or you want to talk about it, comment below and let's chat. Bye.